You might have noticed in recent Blender updates that Geometry Nodes has been getting quite a bit of attention. And you might be wondering what Geometry Nodes is and why you might use it. Here's a summary of what I'll cover in this video. But first, let me introduce 3D Dot Design, your gateway to a world of captivating 3D character models, icons, and more. Dive into our extensive library boasting artists, avatars, sleek cars, and diverse file formats compatible with tools like After Effects. Start your creative journey here for an immersive experience. Alright, here we are in Blender and I'm using version 4. It's important to note that Geometry Nodes is constantly changing and updating, so I recommend you use version 4. And if some of the nodes don't exist, then chances are you just need to update. Now this is just the default scene. Right here we have the default cube, and I'm just going to delete these two items, the camera and the light. And we're going to keep the default cube. This is what we're going to be adding geometry nodes onto. The geometry nodes is a modifier, and if you come over here to the wrench, you'll see that we can add a modifier. And geometry nodes is actually in here. You can click that to get started. Or you can come up here to the geometry nodes workspace. And if you don't see it up here, you can just hit this plus. And it's under general then geometry nodes. I'm just going to click that button right there. And now we're into the geometry nodes workspace. You can see here, this is where we put all the nodes. To get started, you just want to select your object and then hit new. And it will add a new geometry node setup. Here you can see we have the modifier tool. You can click and drag the nodes to move them around. Or you can with them selected just hit G. And that also grabs them and drags them around. If you want these to snap to the grid to stay more organized, then you can hit this magnet right here. And it will snap like this. Also, I'm going to turn on one add-on. All you must do is go up to edit, then preferences and then under add-ons. Search for Node Wrangler and turn that on. This just basically gives you some extra options to tweak. So when you first add the Geometry Nodes modifier, we just start with two nodes, the input and the output. And if you disconnect it, you'll notice that the cube disappears. And if you come over here and hit Tab to go into Edit Mode, this is the original geometry, and you can move it around however you like, or you could even replace it with something else. That's what this is. Now, the group output is the result of whatever you do with nodes. To get started, I'll add in a node, and you can add nodes in a few different ways. You can either go to this add menu right here, we have all these options, or you can hit shift A, and we have all the same options here. And in the workspace, you can also hit S to start searching for something. For now, I'm going to hit shift A, go to the geometry and choose transform. This is a very basic node. You can just drop it in right here and it should connect automatically. This just lets you move your object around, like this. You can rotate it, scale it, and this is a good example of the difference between the input and the output. And when I'm moving it like that, what we're seeing is the result of this node that is considered the group output. The group input is the unchanged geometry. Now, if I go into edit mode, you can see that we have our original geometry still in the same spot. So that would be considered the group input. Another thing that's worth mentioning is that we have multiple socket shapes. You can see here we have these circles. And if I bring in something that has a different shape, I'll go to maybe a utilities random value. We have this random value right here. This is a diamond. And if we try to plug this into the rotation, for example, it'll turn red like that. And that just means that it doesn't work. It's not going to do anything. So if you ever see something that's red, that just means it doesn't work. Another thing that you can do with geometry nodes is not use the group input at all. If I just delete this transform and you can see when it's detached, we have nothing in here. And we can add in a primitive shape so we can hit Shift A. Go to Mesh Primitives. And we have all these options right here. I'm just going to drag in a cone. And I'll also drag in a cube. And if we want it, we could just grab this green socket labeled Mesh and plug it into the geometry and we get a cone that appears. Now our group input still exists, the geometry right here. It's just that we're not using it. So if you go into edit mode, you'll see that our original geometry is still there. It's just not being used. We have all these options to change the shape of our primitive things like that. Some of these are going to be easier to tell what's going on. If you go up here into wireframe mode, and if we change the side segments, you can see where it's adding the geometry and the fill. 
you could also turn this basically into a cylinder. I recommend just checking out all these mesh primitives and getting ideas for what they do, how you can change them and things like that. If you want it to have two different shapes, visible at the same time, you can do that with a node called Join Geometry. So I'll hit Shift A. Under Geometry, then Join Geometry. And you'll see that this socket is longer. And that means you can plug multiple nodes into it. We'll just drop it in right here. And I'll plug the cube in there also. And now we have two different shapes at the same time. And if we want it, we could move these separately also. And I'll just bring the transform node back in under Geometry Transform. Pop it right here and we can move the cube to the side like that. One thing worth mentioning is that if you wanted multiple cubes, you don't necessarily have to bring in multiple cube nodes like this. You can just plug it into the joint geometry multiple times. So we have this one going through the transform. But I can also just bypass it and put it in directly like this. And now we have two cubes. I'm going to take this transform node and hit Shift D to duplicate it and bring it over here also. So we can move these around separately. Another thing that's nice about working with nodes in general is that you can reuse values. So for instance, if I wanted to be able to scale both of these up at the same time and have the same value, we can just bring in a value node. I'll just hit Shift A and under input we can grab value from here. And this is just a single value. And if I set this to 1 and plug it into the scale, which has 3 values, it's basically going to make all 3 of these values equal to this one. And now we can scale it up and down. We can also plug this into the scale of our COM2. And now when I change this value, both of these will scale up at the same time. Another thing worth mentioning is that if you don't want all of these to have the same value, you can use a different node called the vector node. You can just go over to input and choose vector. And this is the same as the value node, except it has three values. So being able to control multiple values at the same time and reusing values can come in handy, especially if you want things to be proportional to each other. So for instance, if we wanted the cube to be half the scale of the cone, then we can just use a math node. I'll hit Shift A, Utilities Math. We can drop that in right here and change this to Multiply and just set it to 0.5. Now when we change this, the cube will always be half the scale. I recommend just kind of playing around with this. You could plug this for instance into rotation. And we can set this to something maybe higher, let's turn it up to 5. And now the cube should rotate 5 times as fast as the cone. And if you ever want to just change one value instead of all three, the node you would want to use is called the Combine XYZ. So, Shift A, and it's under Vector Combine XYZ. We could plug that into the rotation. And I'll grab a second one and plug it into rotation also. And we can make it so that these are only rotating on the Z axis like this, I'll plug that in here. Now, you can see that the cube is rotating 5 times as fast as the cone like that, but only on one axis. And we still have these other ones available to play around with. And when you start making bigger and more complex node trees, and you have a lot of these like nodes that are used for basically just controlling things, you might want to have easier access to them. Now, one thing you can do is make it so things are controlled over on the modifier panel. And the way you do that is with the group input node. You can see that we have this empty slot right here. It's an empty socket. And you can just drag that kind of anywhere you want. So for instance, I'll just take this and plug it into the scale of our cone. And I'll also do the same thing for the scale of our cube. And you can see now we have options over here. And we can scale this however we'd like. We can also use this to control the Z rotation. Basically, the same thing that this value is plugged into right here. You just drag it over and plug the same socket into the multiply over here. Just disconnect that. Now we can affect the rotation also. And something like this can come in handy when you're making something complex. And you want to share it with someone else. And you can just put all the relevant controls over here so they don't have to shift through all of your nodes. Now if you want to get rid of some of these, you can open up this panel right here. There's a little arrow. 
you can just drag that open. Go to the group and you have all of the options right here. So if I want to get rid of the scale for the cone then I can just hit minus and it will go away. We also have these other options down here so you can rename it. You can change the type. We could change the type to something like float. And now it just has one value that you can use to scale things up and down with. We also have a tooltip and you can type whatever you want. And now when you hover over that field you can see that it will display the tooltip. This is nice for if you have a whole bunch of things over here and you and you kind of like forget what they do. Then you can write a little description of what it does here instead of having a really long title. Another basic thing you should know how to do is how to add materials. Let's just come over here to the material properties. And I just want to change this one to I'll just call it red. And we'll change the base color to red. And we'll add a second one to new. And I'll change this one to blue and we'll make that blue. Now we have two different materials. And if we come over here to material preview, you can see neither of these are applied. If we were to plug the original geometry in over here, you'll see that it is red. It's the color of the first one. But we don't actually have that applied to either of these shapes. So we need to bring in a node called the set material node. You can just hit shift A, go to material, then set the material. And it's going to matter where you place this. Now I'll place it right here at the very end. And under here you can just select whatever material you want. I'll change this to red. And because I put it after the joint geometry, it's making both of these shapes red. For instance, if I bring it over here instead, you'll see that only the cone is red because I'm putting it before the joint geometry. So this is how you could make multiple objects have different materials. We could also duplicate this, shift D to duplicate and drop it right here. And I can change this one to blue. And now we have two different materials. One is coloring the cube. The other one is coloring the cone. An important thing to remember when you're doing this is that materials will kind of override each other. And if I were to duplicate this and put it afterward, it will override the set material right here because it's closer to the group output basically. Just remember that if you're putting these all over the place, you don't want to override things accidentally. Alright, let's create that cool spiky ball shape now. For that, I'm just going to come up here and hit the X to get rid of that geometry node setup. I'm going to click new and this is going to add a new modifier. You can access the other ones that we made over here. And you can save them also by clicking this badge. And I'll click that on the other one also. And I'll just name this spiky ball. So instead of using the original geometry, I'll use an ecosphere instead. I'll hit shift A and search for the ecosphere. And we can just connect that up like this. And we have this ecosphere. I'm going to turn the subdivisions up a little higher, maybe to 3, something like that. And then I'm going to bring in an extrude node. So shift A, mesh extrude, then mesh. And you can just place it in right here. And you can see immediately this is giving us kind of a cool result. And this is because it's extruding individual faces. You can play with these values to get different results. If you turn the individual off, all the faces will still be connected. Now if we want these to all have random offset scales, if I want this value to be random for each face, all I must do is bring in a random value node so you can hit shift A. Utilities, then random value. And we can plug that in. And now this offset scale right here. Each face will have a random value between 0 and 1. So you can change these values. If you want this to be even more extreme, you can just change these values. And the seed is going to kind of give it like a random pattern. And you have a lot of options for things like how complex you want it to be. Also, if you wanted you could change the radius on the fly. And you can even turn the subdivisions up even higher. For something like higher resolution. I recommend just going into the add menu right here. And checking out a lot of the nodes and seeing what exists right here. One thing you could play with is instead of using a random value. You can check out the different textures. Under textures, we have the noise texture. And you can plug the factor into the offset scale instead and play with some of these values. Then you can see we get some pretty cool effects. It doesn't take long to get results that look really cool. And again, this seems complex, but this is only three nodes. So try not to get too overwhelmed when learning new things because things might seem complicated on the outside. But when you look into it, there's really not that much work to do. Obviously, this is going to change from case to case, but this is an example of something cool you can make that really doesn't take that long. 
An extra step that you can take is changing this from 3D to 4D and moving this W value right here with the node called scene time. So shift A and I'm just going to search for time, scene time and I'll plug the seconds into the W and I'll change the scale down to 1. And now when I hit play, this will animate. Alright, that's it for this one. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section. I love hearing from each and every one of you. Do explore our vast library of 3D character models at 3D.design. And finally, if you found value in this video, give this a big thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.